Hi everyone. This week we're creating this subsurface skin effect inspired by Iron Man 3. It's a resolved spin on a classic video co-pilot After Effects tutorial. Growing up I used to love watching their videos and trying to recreate them myself. Feeling nostalgic, I decided to have a go at transposing it to Fusion. Let's get started. So I'm already in Fusion and the first thing we're going to do is a planar track of the footage. So I'm going to go to a frame where the image should be undistorted, so that would be the last frame there, and I'm going to add a planar tracker like that. And then I'm going to start drawing our shape. So I'm going to draw around the side of my head here, just trying to keep things on the same rough plane. Like that, I'm going to click on set reference frame. And then let's change the tracker type to hybrid point area. And then I'm going to track backwards. Okay, so we can see our track has gone off um, just as the head turns here. So I know I'm not going to be able to track this whole thing, but we can certainly help the tracker out a little bit. So let's just scrub through our footage and see where it starts going off. Okay, about there we start to lose the detail. So what I'm going to do is just slightly expand these points just to see if we can grab any more tracking information. And I could probably even just pull this up slightly. Now let's nudge our frame back. It looks like it's hanging on a little better now. Let's just move these. Okay, that's pretty good because I'm not expecting to get a planar track for the whole duration of the shot just when the head starts turning. So now I've finished with the track, I can click on Create Planar Transform and that will create a uh, transform with all of our tracking data in. So just to see how good our track is, I'm going to create a background quickly and I'm going to merge that over the source footage. I'm going to add the planar transform in there. And then I'm going to add a transform node to let us just scale that down to the right size. And now if I view our footage, let's play that through. Okay, that's pretty good. I can see that's sticking for the majority of the shot. I know it doesn't stick for the first bit, but that's fine. We're really not worried about that. I'm going to remove our planar tracker node now because we don't need that anymore. And I'm going to import some assets that I've already downloaded some veins here to make our vein map. So I'm going to drag these over here and it's already handily uh, merged these together for us. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just take this first asset and I'm going to merge it over a white background because we want the uh, uh, the composition to be the same size as our source footage. And we also want a completely white background for our map. So I'm going to make that white just like so. And now if we grab these merge nodes, we can actually start moving our graphics around. I want to keep everything in the center here. So if we grab this uh, asset here, for example, and we start dragging it, we'll see that it's going behind the white values on this node here. So what we want to do is change the apply mode to multiply on all of these. And that will keep everything that's black and it will fade in everything that's white like so so next we want to grab a fast noise node and plug that into the input of our track that we did earlier so that's being tracked over our face if we take the fast noise we can play around with the detail here detail contrast scale these things and then up the seethe rate as well because that will give us a little bit of animation and we've got kind of a foggy pattern there now tracked to the face now if we take our vein map that we made and we plug that into our fast noise mask input and then under settings we'll set the channel to red green or blue just anything other than alpha and view our merge again we can see that our veins are now occluding that fast noise 
not allowing any of that through. So that's going to give us the effect that the veins are sort of uh, blocking the light from coming through. Now to mask this out, what we want to do is uh, take this composition here and we want to merge it over a background and give the background a zero alpha value. This will make it completely transparent. And now if we go back to our final merge node here, we can actually start drawing a mask around the area of the face where we want this effect to show. So I'm going to draw just a rough mask for now around here, like that, and then plug that into the transparent background. And I think I might just need to switch the inputs there. Yep, there we go. So now our mask matches exactly where we want it to. So I'm just going to drag that to somewhere, say about there, maybe give it some scale. And then we want to whack up that soft edge to really make it blend in with the face, but not too much because we don't want it to overlap on areas where it's not supposed to be. So I'm just going to move that around. And yeah, that's already looking pretty good. So now I'm going to change the apply mode to, I believe it is color dodge. And that really starts to give us this kind of like brightened effect behind the skin. If you click on the fast noise, you could even start changing the color to something a bit more fiery um, like that. And that will just give you an even more intense kind of glow effect there. You can sort of take the red down a bit maybe. And then just play around with the mask until you've got it. Because here you can see it's overlapping where it shouldn't be. So I'm just going to drag this around. And make sure it's in the right place. I'm not overlapping where the hair is or any of the wall. So the final stage to this effect is really creating something called um, parallax. And it's the effect where things that are different distances from the camera will look like they're moving at dif different speeds and it really sells sells a sense of um, 3D depth in the image. So to do that, let's go back to our um, composition here with all of our vein assets. And I'm just gonna start moving these over each other, scaling them up, just creating sort of like a mesh web of veins. And on this one, for example, maybe I'll add a blur to it. Just give that a little bit of blur just to give sort of a bit of the depth of field effect there and if we go back to our veins now we can see how they're all overlapping now the parallax is going to occur just as the head is turning so let's go to a good frame where the head starts to turn but we've got good tracking data let's say let's say about there because i can clean this up with masking later and i'm going to grab one of these assets let's say um our Let's say this one down here, I think, because it's one of our first ones. Yep. I'm going to grab that. And I'm going to set a... Well, actually, I'll tell you what. I'm going to add a transform node after that, because that will just give us individual control without having to mess around with the merge node. And I'm going to set a keyframe on the center. And then what we'll do is we'll let that play forward a few frames. And then we'll move that, say, over there. And it'll create another keyframe. And what you'll see is as that face is moving, the veins behind it are moving too. And it just gives a sense of depth that these veins are on top and these veins are behind. One final thing we'll do is just blend this um, effect in nicely because obviously from here it's not tracked. so. We're going to want it to come in just when the tracking starts. So let's go to a good frame. Um, I think it starts tracking well from about here. And this I can just clean up with the mask later. So I'll set a keyframe on here on the blend value. Set that to zero. Set a keyframe. We'll jog it forward a few frames. And I'll set the blend value to one. So that will fade, fade in like that. And in fact, we might actually just want to turn the blend down to maybe even half um, and it will just make the effect blend even better with our footage. So that is the um, the basic principles of this effect. 
What I'm going to do now is just go through and tidy this up, but I'll do it on a time lapse because um, I'll only be following the steps that I've already showed you how to do. It's just going to be a case of um, cleaning things up and making it look better. And that's another effect done. Hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you'd like to see more tutorials transposed from After Effects into Fusion, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.